We had Donna, uh, Ronna McDaniel on, Donna, earlier on the program, uh, chairwoman of the RNC, and she was talking about the possibility of a brokered convention, the impact that would have on Bernie Sanders. Here's Ronna. It does depend on how big the lead that Sanders takes out of California is, if he picks up a, a huge proportion of delegates. But I don't see anybody getting out soon, and it's leading towards potentially a broker convention, which will uh, be rigged against Bernie if those superdelegates have their way on that second vote. To that, you say what, Donna? First of all, I, I want to talk to my Republicans. First of all, stay the hell out of our race. Stay the hell out of our race. I get sick and tired, Ed. Uh, and Sandra, of listening to Republicans tell me and the Democrats about our process. Well, I think that Rachel Maddow is guilty of malignant wokeism. Uh, God did not anoint her the arbiter of who was appropriate uh, for her network to hire or what their point of view is. Instead, you had this cabal of aging superstars at the network who insisted that this person was somehow inappropriate. Says who and according to whom. It really well, is outrageous. This is. And Joe Scarborough to Nicole Wallace and Joy Reid and Rachel Maddow, Lawrence O'Donnell and others. There's a reason so many people have this reaction. It's not because McDaniel's a Republican or conservative and everyone thought, oh, no, a Republican on NBC News. We all recognize a variety of views is vitally important in understanding our country, in doing good programming. The reason this precipitated the visceral gut reaction that it did is that there's just a pretty bright red line in American life after January 6th. Do you ever remember as a child being told, don't touch the hot object and find him out the hard way, literally by burning your hand or something? Or if I told you now to go and play with the traffic, you think, no, that's not a good idea. I've even said to you, how about, um, I don't know, put in pepper in your eyes. All oh, ridiculous thing if you're going to tell you lost the plot. Uh, if I told you, that a uh, reputable news organization was going to bring on a election denier, a liar, somebody who doesn't really know the truth, even if it's laid right out there in front of them, somebody who will change their story uh, publicly and say a whole load of different things privately as a political analyze, uh, somebody who's analyzing and can't say, uh, analyzing the political <laughs> scenarios and situations, uh, the political debate chief correspondent there's lots of republicans who tried to stop that but ronna romney mcdaniel is unfortunately on the wrong side of that red line she aided and abetted in the biggest attack to destroy american democracy since the civil war she helped perpetuate lies that donald trump told as part of his plot to overthrow the constitutional order no i'm confident you'd say it's not happening so who is the bright spark who is the very clever person uh, at NBC who decided to bring on Rona McDaniel to be a political correspondent? Who was it? Somebody somewhere uh, drew up the contract. Somebody somewhere thought, yes, this is the way that uh, NBC and MSNBC should progress. Uh, and also as well, uh, didn't bother to actually ask any of their leading personnel. You know, the people, the personalities uh, that keep it together. It's almost as if they thought, oh, let me put a call in to somebody at Fox. Who would you recommend to come and work at MSNBC? Anyway, as predicted, it's all gone. English expression. Tip top. Sorry if it sounds sexist, but that's, it's not. Google it. Uh, it's, it's not happening. Uh, the lawyers are going to be called as a word of a tenure. Oh, what, a, what a PR disaster. What a mess. It's almost as good as, you yeah, remember when CNN decided to become the conservative news network? Uh, who should we pick? Because there are quite a few of them right now in terms of uh, perfect words to describe why Rona McDaniel is a disaster. Uh, all right, we'll start with Rachel Maddow. NBC News leadership has announced that former RNC chair Ronna McDaniel will not be an NBC News contributor. We have a new email and update that's come out just within this hour. So this is sort of breaking news here within our organization on a story that has garnered significant uh, attention and criticism. And what I'm going to do now, to be very clear, is read the entire update uh, from NBC Universal News Group Chairman Cesar Conde. He has written in this new email, quote, there's no doubt that the last several days have been difficult for the news group. After listening to the legitimate concerns of many of you, I have decided that Ronna McDaniel will not be an NBC News contributor. 
He goes on to write that no organization, particularly a newsroom, can succeed unless it is cohesive and aligned. Over the last few days, it has become clear that disappointment undermines that goal. The news chairman continues to say, quote, I want to personally apologize to our team members who felt we let them down. While this was a collective recommendation by some members of our leadership team, I approved it and take full responsibility for it, says Cesar Conde, the chairman. He explains, quote, our initial decision was made because of our deep commitment to presenting our audiences with a widely diverse set of viewpoints and experiences, particularly during these consequential times. And then in closing this message, which, uh, again, uh, is brand new. We're airing it for the first time here on MSNBC, having come out this hour. Quote, we continue to be committed to the principle that we must have diverse viewpoints on our programs. And to that end, we will redouble our efforts to seek voices that represent different parts of the political spectrum, end quote. If you watch MSNBC, as you probably do if you're listening to me right now, or you follow news media and politics, this has been a roiling debate since that initial announcement was made on Friday. Many people have weighed in, and now the news chairman... I'll be joined by former RNC chair Rhonda McDaniel in her first interview since stepping down as party chair. In full disclosure to our viewers, this interview was scheduled weeks before it was announced that McDaniel would become a paid NBC News contributor. This will be a news interview, and I was not involved in her hiring. I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation. And look, there's a reason why there's a lot of journalists at NBC News uncomfortable with this, because many of our professional dealings with the RNC over the last six years have been met with gaslighting, mm. have been met with character assassination. We weren't asked our opinion of the hiring, but if we were, we would have strongly objected to it. NBC News, either wittingly or unwittingly, is teaching election deniers that what they can do stretches well beyond appearing on our air in interviews to peddle lies about the sanctity and integrity of our elections, but that they can do that as one of us as badge-carrying employees of NBC News. There is an easy way to avoid the controversy NBC News has stumbled into. Don't hire anyone close to the crimes. She literally backed an illegal scheme to steal an election in the state of Michigan. That is the type of experience that Ronna McDaniel brings to the table. And that experience does not get us to a deeper understanding of anything in the public debate. I want to associate myself with all my colleagues, both at MSNBC and at NBC News, who have voiced loud and principled objections to our company putting on the payroll someone who hasn't just attacked us as journalists, um, but someone who is part of an ongoing project to get rid of our system of government. The person who is the head of the Republican Party during Donald Trump's time in office and during his effort to throw out the election result and stay in power anyway, and during his effort to run for election again after having done that, is Ronna Romney McDaniel. And she pitched in and helped. She helped set in motion the part of the plot that involved sending fake Trump electors to Congress. Our chairman of the of the NBC Universal News Group, Cesar Conde, uh, who we both know very well, um, he sent a memo that we all got as employees here uh, rescinding the hiring of Ronna Romney McDaniel. And I know I felt very strongly about it. I know you felt very strongly about it. I think everyone from four o'clock on, from Nicole all the way to midnight, we all felt very strongly and said so on our respective shows uh, yesterday. And I, I just have to say, when somebody does the right thing, I feel like it should be acknowledged as publicly as we acknowledged our outrage. And so I, I know how I feel about it. I am grateful to Caesar for actually making the right decision. I think it was the right decision. But I want to get your take as well. Oh, well, thank you for asking me about it. I, I still feel like I still I still feel like a little it, it always feels wrong to talk about things, you know, in the company Agreed. as if it's news. And, I, you know, it's just this. It's yeah. not the way either you or I are, are wired, I know. But I I will just say that journalists are a fractious bunch, 
And in our big company with all sorts of different journalistic entities, you have all sorts of different people working in this business, doing all sorts of different kinds of work. And to see the essentially unanimous feeling among all the journalists in this building That's and all it. the sort of senior staff and all the producers and everybody in this building about this was one thing. But then to see the executives and the leadership hear that and respond to it and be willing to change course based on it, based on their respect for us and hearing what we argued. I, I have deep respect for that. I do. I, I mean, what I said on the air last night on my show that I think that acknowledging that you might have gotten something wrong is a real sign of strength, a real show of strength. And I think it's a show of strength. And I think it's a show of respect for the people who work at this company and who make us who we are, um, that leadership was willing to change on this. And I'm, I'm grateful to them. You know, it's not about hiring a Republican. It's not even about hiring somebody who has Trump ties. This was a really specific case because yeah. of Ms. McDaniel's and uh, her involvement in the election interference stuff. And um, I'm, I'm grateful that our, our leadership was willing to do the I think this, the bold, strong, resilient thing. Yeah, I mean, we're going to be using her name because she's a witness in the Michigan electors case. I mean, it's like it's, it's less awkward to have to say. And by the way, this person works for NBC News. Right. We're, we're, we're glad we don't have to do that. Uh, Rachel yes. Maddow, it's always a pleasure, uh, my friend. Thank you very much. I now release you to your evening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joy. Thank, Thank you very Thanks. much. I appreciate it. Okay. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. As my first order of business, I hereby declare martial law. Citizens of the new America. Here are today's announcements. All citizens must continue to report any progressive or liberal activity. Failure to do so will be met with harsh punishment and immediate has become unrecognizable. Your unwavering loyalty to the great leader Donald Trump is mandatory. And essential. I want to be a dictator. Let's remember who we are. We're the United States of America. Yesterday, we were talking about um, Melania Trump and asking the question, uh, this former guy, has he ever cheated on her and been unfaithful? Uh, a lot of people said, uh, I avoided the elephant in the room in terms of the, the person that was seen uh, with Donald J. Trump going to vote in Florida is not the real Melania Trump. And she said that. From day one. So, Melania, thank you. She's largely treated as an ornament. You spin, baby. He's strong and loving. Donald cares. She is what we here in America, like, we're about God, family, work. Melania, come. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Are you confident? It's, uh, well, we're almost going down Kate Middleton territory. So uh, many people said you should run a vote. So I'm going to do that. Uh, if you think this is a fake Melania Trump, just press the like button for yes. OK, um, that's all. Do you think uh, that the, uh, the setup of Mar-a-Lago with Diaper Don is using a fake Melania Trump, that the real Melania Trump is actually not the one who is on public display? Uh, bearing in mind it was uh, Baron Trump's uh, 18th birthday as well. Uh, well, that was yesterday. Today's 21st of March. Uh, happy belated birthday to Baron. Uh, but neither of them were seen publicly, yet uh, it suits, it would appear, uh, the Trumpy Trumps and the Trump setup. Uh, Melania is put on public display. So again, is it the real Melania or a fake Melania? If you think, yes, it's a fake Melania, uh, would you press the like button now? And as I said, apologies, should have done this uh, yesterday. Auditioning or something like that, because Mr. Bobulinski, I know that you take exception to the fact that your credibility has been called into question over and over. But when someone comes to testify under oath, whether it's before this committee, behind closed doors or in person, then we have to evaluate someone's credibility. And, sir, I definitely have always had issues with your credibility, as I know that you are very well aware of. So let me remind you of well, what you, happened behind <coughs> closed doors. I well, you should asked, ask Ro Khan about my credibility. I haven't asked credibility. you a question. Okay. You are? When I, I haven't. So oh, when okay, I ask I'm you a sorry. question, that's when you answer. Otherwise, I'm talking. So Excuse me? with my time, because it's my time, I want to be clear 
that when we were behind closed doors, you called a number of people liars. So much was going on in Congress uh, on Wednesday that uh, we missed a moment. Well, quite a few people missed a moment. The man behind the mask will reveal it all. Uh, Jared Muskovich was having, well, uh, I think hitting the nail on the head with this. I just came to thank James Cuomo for taking all of our intelligence and using it in the committee. Maybe he can come see the technology in our grocery stores. Thank you. Congressman, I think it's the is kind of mature. Good, good eye. That was Muskowitz. And now let's play Can You Spot No in this word salad. Is there any effort on the part of your team to secure through another country, Saudi Arabia or Russia, as Joy Behar seems to think? Well, there's rules and regulations that are public. I can't speak about strategy that require certain things, and we have to follow those rules. Like I said, this is manifest injustice. It is impossible. It's an impossibility. I believe they knew that. I think that's why mid-trial, frankly, they changed their ask from $250 million mm -hmm. to the ridiculous amount of money that they've asked for. I think everything is done intentionally. I do not doubt that the witch hunt, that the election interference goal is what was uh, ringing steady and loud loudly and true throughout all these trials, frankly, and we're seeing it. It's the demise of our country, not the demise of Trump. So we'll, we'll handle it as we always have and, and keep our heads up and keep right. working hard. Okay. Uh, keep us posted. Uh, let's put our foot into the land of irrelevance. Anybody remember Kellyanne Conway? Yeah. What was Kellyanne Conway's job? Uh, some people say it was to uh, just annoy her daughter. Sorry, uh, but apparently we're not allowed to mention her politicians' children if they are of a Republican nature, so we can't mention Baron Trump. Anyway, Kellyanne Conway is of the opinion, if you're a Democrat, then you can't really practice your religion. What was her job, by the way, again in the last administration? Head of line? But anyway, as I said, uh, your religion, Kellyanne Conway says, you're a disbeliever, whatever particular religion uh, you believe in. It's not real. She says so. What? You've caused so much disruption. Disruption? We you lied about your fucking mother about COVID? No, what? Mom. About COVID? It's how I miss. It's how I. But there's something else going on here. The Democrats, most of them, and the party for sure, are openly hostile to religion. You uh, I want to share a clip with you, not for the sensationalism, not the fact it's quite um, heart rendering, but it's more what's happened to politicians caring. Because it would appear it's all about trying to score points. Specifically, I see this on Fox with the talking heads. I see this with some of the more uh, well-known Trumpy Trumps. It's about saying how bad things are, uh, spreading fear. What happened to representatives caring about those who've, well, put them there in the first place? Let me show you this moment from, um, well, it's Ted Cruz. And for me, uh, this happened a while ago. The reason I'm sharing it now, because we're heading to an election. You're going to get politicians knocking on your door, looking for your vote. Ask yourself, go on, ask yourself, just look at Ted Cruz. Has anything changed? I'm going with a no. Kimberly Vaughn was shot to death inside Santa Fe High School in May. Rhonda Hart is her mother. I understand that you were grieving for your daughter horribly. Cruz calmed the crowd. And you still have not introduced common sense reform. Hart came to confront him about gun control. I wanted to be able to call him out on his inaction regarding the children of Santa Fe. Children that died in their art class under his watch when he accepts money from the NRA and he won't introduce any sort of common sense reform. With shooting victim Flo Rice, a substitute teacher, also there, Cruz addressed school security. I think the number one thing that makes schools safer is having more armed police officers on campus to keep our students safe. Special alert. Katie Britt is back with that soft voice. You will listen to me because I know so much more about everything than you do. Um, I think she's trying to get some type of nomination for award season 2025.
It's absolutely disgusting and despicable. When we see them using American taxpayer dollars to fly these people in, and then we see the result of what is happening, you wonder when Joe Biden is going to wake up and realize enough is enough. His Guess who's back as well? Vivek's back, and uh, I've got some bad news for you. Your life is not good. Your life is dreadful. It is. There's like a thunder cloud all over you. The world is going to finish because in comparison to four years ago, when everything was brilliant, like absolutely brilliant, uh, your life is crap now. Uh, sorry to say that, but I suppose if you watch Fox News, you're going you're gonna to believe what they tell you. Don't go out. It's that bad. <coughs> oh, to, to me, the one thing they don't want to talk about is, are you better off than you were four years ago? Because there's no good answer for them. And now, a moment of silence, because, uh, well, Jim Jordan and James Comer's circus has come to a crushing crescendo. It's over. Finished. Yes, uh, the death was called on it. Eric Swar has, uh, well, the moment we'll share with you after Jerry Muskegon. <laughs> How long have they been wasting your money? Sorry to laugh, but... We just throw money at what? Why? What was achieved? Nothing. We got like three and a half minutes here. I mean, let's just do the impeachment. I mean, why continue to waste millions of dollars of the taxpayers' money if we're going to impeach because you believe you've shown he's committed a high crime and misdemeanor? Let, what are you waiting on? Let, let, let's just do it. I mean, by the way, we got Chairman Jordan here also, the double chairman. Why aren't you guys calling for the vote in your committee? When, when is it going to happen? When, when can we tell the American people you're going to stop wasting their money and just call for the vote on impeachment? Gentlemen, I mean, yield. Gentlemen, you? Sure. We don't do snap impeachments like you guys. We actually do the facts. We do oversight according so you're to the you're Constitution. So you're never going to call for it. You're never going to call for it. I mean, you, well, now you can predict. Months. You can predict the future. How well, do you know? You, only, you guys only have six more months, probably in power, right, until the election. So, are you going you to do it in two months? Are you going to do it in three months? Like, tell the American people. Does the Constitution take... put a time limit on oversight? So so I that... don't think I did. I didn't read that in the Constitution. So, that means, so you, if you believe you don't, you don't can't call for the impeachment now, then what you're admitting is you haven't yet proven that he's committed a high crime and misdemeanor. You haven't proven it yet. Otherwise, you would call for it. I assume. We're doing our work. Okay, doing so our so they haven't proven it. Right? They haven't proven he committed a high crime and misdemeanor. Otherwise, we would call for impeachment. I was trying to show that there's not going to be an impeachment. Right? We've been at this for 15 months. Right? They, if they believe that the president has committed a high crime and misdemeanor and they've proven that, then they would call for the vote. If they haven't called for the vote, then that would mean, obviously, that they haven't proven that, which is why it would continue. But, but it, it's never going to happen, Wolf. They know they don't have the votes. They're unfortunately just, you know, giving, you know, red meat uh, to the to their, you know, to the base on this, and they're not being they're not being truthful. They don't even have the votes. Republicans here, uh, a number of them, don't want to vote for impeachment, and they only have a, a two-vote majority. And so now.